let's move on. Talk about something else. Let's talk about power, electric power. Power is the rate at which work is done by electrical energy. Now, we talked about power before, and it's really the same thing. Power is the rate at which any kind of work is done. But now we're specifically talking about electrical power. So electrical energy is doing work. And remember, work is just a change in energy. So what we're really talking about is the rate at which electrical energy is being changed to another form. Um, the unit for power is watts. In the first place, you probably saw the word watts is with light bulbs. So when we're talking about a light bulb, what's happening in a light bulb is that electrical energy is being transformed into heat energy and a lot of light energy, right? And so the power of that bulb, 60 watts, 75 watts, those used to be incandescent bulbs. Now they're more like 13, 17, 21, 21 I think. Uh, the power of that bulb tells us how fast this transformation is taking place, which in turn tells us about the brightness of the bulb. The faster electrical energy is being transformed to heat and light, really light, uh, the brighter the bulb is going to be. So the power in any circuit, in any device, depends on three things in that circuit. Number one, it depends on the voltage, and that's a direct relationship. The greater the voltage, the greater the power. We'll see that in the equation I'll show you in just a second. The second thing that the power depends on is current. Current in a circuit. The greater the current, that means the faster electrons are being delivered to that device, the faster we can convert electrical energy to something else. That's also a direct relationship. And then also resistance in a circuit is inversely related. The reason resistance is inversely related is because simply resistance decreases the current. And so if current goes down, then the power is going to go down as well. That really just replies, applies back to the current. So all of this is shown, or at least the voltage and current is shown in the electric power equation, which is P equals IV. Pretty simple equation, right? P equals IV power equals current times voltage. Power equals current times voltage. And again, remember, we've said this before, but the W here does not stand for work. It stands for watts. The unit for power is watts. So pause the video real quick. Write that down. Make sure you understand that very simple equation, P equals IV. Now, I need to tell you that the equations you're going to be given on the quiz look just a little bit different than this. This P equals IV is going to look the same. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of energy equations right here. We're going to bring those up in a second. But these equations I've talked about separately. The first equation we talked about for current is I equals Q over T. Well, Ohm's law was I equals V over R. And so what I've done to just save space is put it all in the same line. These are really two equations thrown into one. We're either, either going to use I equals V over R or you're going to use I equals Q over T. All right. And in just a second, I'll get to these equations as well. All right, let's get back to the PowerPoint and talk about energy, All right? Electrical energy. So electric companies actually charge by a unit called the kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour is just simply a unit of energy. There's lots of units of energy that people use for different reasons in different places. Uh, another one is like BTUs, British thermal units. That's just a unit of energy. Calories is a unit of energy. Kilocalories is a unit of energy. Uh, one kilowatt hour is a really big unit of energy. It happens to be equal to 3.6 times 10 to the sixth joules, which is 3,600,000 joules. So one kilowatt hour is quite a bit of energy. This was my particular electric bill um, January to February of last year, what I want you to notice is that the people from the electric company will come out and they'll take your meter reading or some of them actually communicate the meter reading wireless, wirelessly. So this was the previous meter reading for the uh, the last, the end of, of the January period, the end of the February period was this one. And what they simply do is subtract the two, 72033 minus 71354. And we get this. That tells them how many kilowatt hours of electrical energy I used in my house over that period. And 679, this is in the wintertime. So that's on the lower end of usage. You use a lot more energy in the summertime when you're running your air conditioner because you use a lot of energy for that. Um, 
But this is approximate, I mean, somewhere between 800, 1,000 kilowatt hours a month, maybe 1,500, depending on how big your house is, how much energy you're using, that's pretty approximate. And then you see my charge here. Uh, if you look down the rest of my bill, I see that there's an $8.67 charge per bill. That's just a flat fee. So what I did is simply subtracted that fee from my charge. And what that gives me is $67.78. That's exactly how much money they charged me for the electricity by itself, right? So all I have to do to figure out the charge per kilowatt hour, pretty simple. This is the total. This is the number of kilowatt hours. 67.78 divided by 679 gives me about 10 cents or 9.98 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's communicated either on my bill or somewhere in my contract. The electric companies will tell you exactly how much money they charge per kilowatt hour, just like the grocery store charges per box of cereal, per apple, per whatever else. It's no different with electrical companies. They charge per unit energy, right? So I want you to understand kilowatt hours because that's the energy unit we use here in the United States for electric companies. But in this class, we're going to use joules because that's the SI unit for energy. We're still going to use joules. Um, these are the equations for electrical energy that I just showed you a minute ago. ago. Energy equals PT. This is power times time. Energy also equals voltage times current times time. It's just two different equations for energy. It's either E equals PT or E equals VIT. Which one you use depends on what you're given in the problem. And I'll show you that in just a second in the problems that we're going to solve. So the unit for energy, remember, is joules. This last slide I want you to see, and then I'm going to put up the equations again, right? So here are the equations, right? Look at all of these variables in these equations. There are one, two, three, four, five, six new variables in the equations. And a lot of people just get confused by these variables and their units. So I want to go through this. This is a really useful slide for you. One quantity is charge. The variable for charge is lowercase q. And the unit is capital C, which stands for Coulombs, all right? What's the next one? Voltage. Pause the video and see if you can remember what the variable and unit is for voltage. Hopefully, you came up with V on both of them, capital V. Current. Some people get confused by this one. Current is not C. Current, the variable is I, capital I. And the unit is capital A, which stands for amps. Resistance, the variable for resistance is capital R, and the unit is omega, which is ohms, this Greek letter omega, ohms is the unit for resistance. Power, we've already done this one before in this class, the variable for power is capital P, and the unit is capital W, which is watts, watts is the unit for power. And then energy, lots of units for energy, for us when we do our calculations, we're going to use joules. Capital E is the variable for energy and capital J is the unit, right? So notice first of all that our variables, as far as they're concerned, there's only one lowercase variable and that's lowercase q for charge. The rest of them, if you put them in the right order, they spell out the word verpy. Maybe that was on accident. Maybe I did that on purpose. I don't really know. It doesn't matter. But this is a good slide to memorize. Again, these are the variables right here. All of these letters, those are the variables that you find in these equations, which we will use on the next problems, which I will solve for you in the following video.